Gray for Diefendufer Day, with some help from Jack Prelunsky and Lane Smith by Dr. Zeus. I've always lived in Dinkerville. My friends all live here too. We go to Diefendufer School. We're happy that we do. Our school is at the corner of Dinker Zuber and Dinker Zot. It looks like any other school, but we suspect it's not. I think we're learning a lot of things not taught at other schools. Our teachers are remarkable. They make up their own rules. Ms. Bobble teaches listening. Ms. Wobble teaches smelling. Ms. Fribble teaches laughing. And Ms. Quibble teaches yelling. Ms. Twinning teaches tying knots in neckerchiefs and noodles. And how to tell chrysanthemums for miniature poodles. Ms. Vinning teaches all the ways a pigeon may be peppered and how to put a saddle on a lizard or a leopard. My teacher is Ms. Bonkers. She's as bouncy as a flea. I'm not certain what she teaches, but I'm glad she teaches me. Look, look, she chirps. I'll show you how to tell a cactus from a cow. And then I shall instruct you why a hippo cannot fly. She even teaches frogs to dance and pigs to put on underpants. One day she taught a duck to sing. Miss Bonkers teaches everything. Of all the teachers in our school, I like Miss Bonkers best. Our teachers are all different, but she's differenter than the rest. We also have a principal. His name is Mr. Lowe. He is the very saddest man that any of us know. He mumbles, are they learning this and that and such and such? His face is wrinkled as a prune from worrying so much. He breaks a lot of pencil points from pushing down too hard, and many dogs start barking as he mopes around the yard. We think he wears false eyebrows, in fact, we're sure it's so. We've heard he takes them off at night. I guess we'll never know. But we know he likes Miss Bonkers. He treats her like a queen. He's always there to watch her when she's on the trampoline. There are many other people who make Deef and Doofer run. They are utterly amazing. I love every single one. Our nurse, Miss Clot, knows what to do when we've got sniffles or the flu. One day I had a splinter so she bandaged me from head to toe. Mr. Plunger, our custodian, has fashioned a machine, a super zooper flooper do. It keeps the whole school clean. Our music teacher, Mrs. Fox, makes bagpipes out of straws and socks. Our art instructor, Mr. Bees, paints pictures by hanging by his knees. In science class with Mr. Katz, we're learning to build robot rats. In gym, we watch as Mr. Bear hoists elephants into the air. Ms. Loon is our librarian. She hides behind the shelves and often cries out louder when we're reading to ourselves. We have three cooks, all named Mr. Munch, who merrily prepare our lunch. They make us hot dogs, beans, and fries, plus things we do not recognize. And as they cook, they sing their song, not too short and not too long. Roast and toast and slice and dice, Cooking lunch is oh so nice. We were eating their concoctions, telling jokes and making noise, when Mr. Lowe appeared and howled, Attention, girls and boys! He began to fuss and fidget, scratch and mutter, sneeze and cough. He shook his head so hard, we thought his eyebrows would come off. He wrung his hands, he cleared his throat, he shed a single tear, then sobbed, <gasps> I've something to announce, and that is why I'm here. All schools for miles and miles around must take a special test to see who's learning such and such, to see which school's the best. If our small school does not do well, then it will be torn down, and you will have to go to school in dreary Flobber Town. <laughs> not Flobber Town, we shouted. And we shuddered at the name, for everyone in Flobbertown does everything the same. It's miserable in Flobbertown. 
They dress in just one style. They sing one song. They never dance. They march in single file. They do not have a playground, and they do not have a park. Their lunches have no taste at all. Their dogs are scared to bark. Miss Bonkers rose. Don't fret, she said. You've learned the things you need to pass that test and many more. I'm certain you'll succeed. We've taught you that the earth is round, that red and white make pink, and something else that matters more. We've taught you how to think. I hope you're right," sighed Mr. Low. He shed another tear. <laughs> the test is in ten minutes, and you're taking it right here. We sat in shock and disbelief. Oh no! We moaned. Oh no! We were even more unhappy than unhappy, Mr. Low. But then the test was handed out. Yahoo! We yelled. Yahoo! For it was filled with all the things. That we all knew, we knew. There were questions about noodles, about poodles, frogs, and yelling, about listening and laughing, and chrysanthemums and smelling. There were questions about other things we've never seen or heard, and yet we somehow answered them, enjoying every word. One week later, after recess, Mr. Low meandered in. We'd never seen him smile before. But now he wore a grin. He soon began to giggle. Then his giggle grew by half, and then it really happened. Mr. Low began to laugh. You've saved our school! You've saved our school! He jubilantly roared. We've got the highest score. He wrote it on the board. Miss Bonkers did some cartwheels till her face turned cherry red. She bounded up to Mr. Low and kissed him on the head. "Hooray! Hooray!" she shouted. "I'm so proud I cannot speak." So she did another cartwheel and she pecked him on the cheek. <laughs> Coughed Mr. Low. "You all deserve a bow. I thus declare a holiday. It starts exactly now. Because you've done so splendidly in every sort of way, this day forever shall be known as Diefendufer Day. And furthermore, I promise." I won't ever wear a frown, for now I know we'll never go to dreary Flubber Town. Then we held a celebration. There was pizza, milk, and cake. Like everyone, I ate too much, and I got a belly ache. We laughed and whooped and hollered the entire school day long. Then we all sang triumphantly the Diefendufer song.